Still in the uh, chronological survey, the 18th section, um, we're in the Middle Ages, and what I'm going to try to do with each of the periods uh, pretty much through the rest of the year is deal with history, then characteristics, and then classics. That's what I'm about. What have they left us uh, that we still value? The humanities is very much about appreciating the classics. And so I'm going to say classics from the period. And I sort of started with the legends of King Arthur. I, uh, 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 a, a week ago or so, I had left you saying, well, here, I recommend you, you look at one of these uh, uh, movies about King Arthur. Uh, I'm ready to talk a little bit more about him. Uh, King uh, Arthur, uh, if he ever lived at all, he's legendary, but if he ever lived at all, he was a Roman general, probably. And one of the reasons that the fairly recent movie, King Arthur, could be called good because it, it, it treats uh, sort of like a real Arthur to some extent. But it was in the Middle Ages that these legends got so popular. And so King Arthur is usually portrayed, he, he and his knights, in medieval terms, in the shining armor with the lances, not as, a, not as fighting Anglo-Saxons back around 500 uh, AD when, when he would have lived at all, uh, really. Well, anyway, there's, these are very, very popular. They're one of the most popular sets of stories probably ever. Uh, and not only in English, all across Europe, too, really. But anyway, uh, with characters, and I, I usually like to ask the kids, all right, who can you come up with? Name some characters uh, from King Arthur. And uh, they'll, that's fun, and I'll see what they can name. Guinevere, that's his queen. Lancelot, his most trusted friend and best knight. Uh, Merlin, his teacher, his wizard. Um, Excalibur, his sword. X, out of rock, out of the rock, out of the stone. Uh, Camelot was the name of his court. He had the round table. Kids can usually come up with some of this or more. The Holy Grail, uh, which when things went so bad that was maybe going to save the kingdom. Uh, the Lady of the Lake. Uh, they will know that. A lot of times though, they're not going to know these two. Uh, Morgan Le Fay, that is his sister who is a witch. His witch sister, Morgan Le Fay. And Mordred, that was King Arthur's son, which he had unnaturally to his witch sister. We're supposed to think that it was not Arthur that was at fault here. It was the fact that his sister was a witch. And so uh, Arthur and uh, Mordred uh, hated each other. Here we've got that, that archetype of the rebellious son, uh, as I, ha I haven't talked about it for quite a while. Uh, and uh, the, the, he ends up managing to ruin uh, uh, the high ideal of, of uh, the table, uh, of the round table. And in this final battle when Mordred and, uh, and King Arthur fight each other and King Arthur's dying, um, Sir Bedivere throws uh, Excalibur out over the water and the Lady of the Lake, her arm comes up and catches it. Now there are many versions of this and so I got to be careful which version do I mean really because it's pointless to get into too much of an argument because these are all legends. Uh, and I'll have more to say about them a little bit later. But uh, jump now to epic themes, I don't remember, that's section four or, or six or something like that, I don't know. And uh, that's in your notes. And I would put epic now in parentheses because I'm not at all sure that this ever occurred in an epic, but it is certainly a major theme in literature, a love triangle. This is the first, this is the oldest famous love triangle I know. King Arthur, an older man, uh, Guinevere, his wife, adored him. As, as a husband, as a king, almost fatherly like though, because she was so much younger than he is. King Arthur sends his most trusted knight, uh, Lancelot, to go escort Guinevere uh, to, uh, to uh, bring, bring her to the marriage. Uh, uh, the, very best, the very best of friends, these two. And this was the link which was not supposed to happen. But all of these are bonds the whole way around. Uh, and this is the one sometimes as I draw it, uh, you know, I'll go like this, this was a genuine love, and so was that, and so was that, and so was that, and so was that. But it couldn't be. It was a love triangle. 
uh, and uh, it powers so many stories. Um, soap operas on television, they just go from one to the other to the other, it seems like. Uh, and, uh, y you know, at a certain point I'd mention this to my students and I could uh, see the students even looking around because they knew within their very class, they would know instances where somebody's best friend took his girlfriend away or, or something like that. All right, so anyway, uh, there are many other examples. I would say sea, opera, uh, sea soap operas and other famous ones probably. And then finally, uh, for something to watch, I always try to lighten up the class if I could. I would recommend that you go onto YouTube. I, I ask you to do this and find uh, The Wizard's Door from Disney's Sword in the Stone. Sword in the Stone. The sequence called A Wizard's Door where Merlin fights Madame Mim in A Wizard's Door. I think you'll enjoy it. The kids always love it. And I'm going to go on a little bit with King Arthur tomorrow. See you then.